Good morning, church. How are you today? I'm glad to see you, Marilyn. Glad you made it. Glad you found us. Glad to see the rest of you as well. Get here to my uh, resources. writing. We will be doing morning prayer, of course, um, getting everything where it should be. Uh, got the new microphone go up. Oh. I've been talking and you had not been hearing. Can you hear me now? I bet you can because I turned the mute button off on the new microphone, so sorry about that. Good morning, and I did say good morning to Marilyn there because, and we're, we're glad you're on time and that you made it we're here with us, so. Uh, should be in business now. Um, if you can't hear me, somebody uh, in a minute text me uh, or post a little message there. So, page 77. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Glory. Mm, yes. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. And we'll say this morning, um, Christ our Passover page 83. Thank you, Linda. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. We'll say together um, Psalm 8. It's on page 592. Page 592. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but a little lower than the angels, you adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 11 through 26. While the lame man whom Peter and John had healed clung to them, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? For why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out of the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to our ancestors, saying to Abraham, And in your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to that reading is the Magnificat, and it can be found on page 91. We'll say it together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I came across a very interesting word study, and I will let you be the judges of whether or not it is accurate or not, but it's a word study uh, uh, in the, of the Hebrew word for witness. 
Um, and we read in our uh, first lesson about being witnesses and that they, John and Peter, were witnesses. And now Jesus has told us that we will, or that they will, and we will be their, uh, his witness. Throughout scripture, we hear a number of things about being witnesses. All the way back into the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah says, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be afterwards. And then it goes on to say uh, the responsibilities of the witnesses, and that is that the witness must speak truth, and that the witness is, is obligated to speak about what they have seen or heard, and to fail to do so is actually a sin. And so the witness is one who must actually speak up. Now, the, the Hebrew um, letters um, are, are very similar, or they have, in, in different languages, they're different letters, but um, the, the pictograph for the word um, witness is actually a word that is ed, E-D. Um, and it's made up of the Hebrew letters Ain and Dalet, A-Y-I-N and D-A-L-E-T. So, Ain in the pictographs is the picture of an eye. That makes sense as a witness. Um, Dalet, which is the other uh, part of the, the word, is the picture of a door. So you've got an eye and you've got a door, and those two pictures make up the word witness. And so when you put it all together, the word witness or ed for God is the one who knows or has experienced God and will now provide a pathway or an entrance to that life for others. And so it is one who sees God, knows God, and then shows others the road to God. Which really, and this is the part that just pickled my brain because I didn't know it, and I hope it pickles your brain as well. In the Gospel of John in chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. I am the witness. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And then later in chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is speaking about being this, um, this I door, this I witness. He is the one who has seen God, and he is the one who is showing us the path to God. I don't know, I found it absolutely fascinating. You know, I got goosebumps reading about this. And so it was really quite fun. And it goes on to, to explain a little bit more um, about how all of this plays out. But what was really exciting is what Jesus said um, in that very uh, last sentence of our gospel reading today. You are witnesses of these things. And what does that mean? That means that you, you are witnesses of these things. You are ones who have experienced and seen God. And therefore, you also are to be ones who show the path that leads to God. I just think that's amazing. Um, and it all comes from that one little word, witness. When you see the word witness, think about that and think about how you are to be a door for others to experience the living God. Quite a responsibility, but very exciting work. There you have it. This morning, we continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We'll say suffrages be today. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn in the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And I guess I'm all confused still, because I don't know what day it is, and that's the collect for Friday, so I apologize for that one. How about I say a collect for peace? At least I think today's... What? I don't even know what day it is. Is it Friday? Hmm. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your hum humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the collect at the top of page 101 together. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. At this time I invite your own prayers and intercessions. Just looking at the, the the feed here, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, but his name is Abin Epin, and he says hello, sir. Greetings from India, and so we say hello and and greetings from Oklahoma to you and to those uh, in your family. Uh, for those in St. Matthews, I wanted to let you know that um, most of you have probably heard by now. Um, we did. Uh, we lost another uh, member yesterday morning. Uh, Lou Mybergen passed away yesterday morning about six o'clock. Um, he started having uh, chest pains. Um, they called an ambulance, and it, it went very quickly from there. Um, I've been working with the family, and we're working to put together um, services. And these are very odd times, and so there won't be any public services at this time. But I believe that later, uh, when we're able to get back together again, uh, we'll have a celebration of life for both um, uh, Lou and Sharon Hume, who passed away last week. We'll say together um, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love 
and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Thank you for joining me this morning. I look forward to, um, we'll be back here tomorrow morning. Um, Erica says today is Friday, so we'll be back here tomorrow morning, which will be Saturday. Uh, Saturday at um, uh, 10 a.m. we'll go live here on Facebook again. I hope you have a very blessed day. I hope you're staying safe, staying home if you need to be. If you need something uh, from the parish, please don't hesitate to call the church or call me. Leave a message um, if we don't answer right away, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks so much. God bless, and I'll see you soon.